comes back. I come too far. God is. God is. God is, God is. He's He's my all He's my all And all, stay right there. We thank God. They're going to continue this song. We thank God for the speaker who's here today. I thank God for this man of God, and I really appreciate his very life. He's a humble man of God. God has used him around this country. I thank God he's my brother. He's my frat brother of the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. We serve together as deputy general chaplains for the entire Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated uh, a general convention that's worldwide. And I thank God it's three of us, the chaplain and us too. And I thank God for his very life, his leadership, and how he pours into our Congress. He just left a black uh, Congress, Congressional Caucus, and he was influential there and used there to speak truth to, to the nation, speak truth to the powers that be. And I thank God that he hails from Atlanta, Georgia, serves there as senior pastor, and what a blessing it is to have him with us today, Dr. Kenneth Augustin Walker. So after the music ministry finishes, I'm going to ask you to stand and receive God's man in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Praises to God who said, let there be, and be has been being ever since. To Jesus Christ who taught us that we will have bad Fridays, but if we hold on, we can have a resurrection Sunday. To the Holy Spirit in the super superlative Greek of Paul, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or ask. To the angel of this house, the great bishop, second presiding bishop of the full gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International my fraternity brother, Bishop Brandon, pulpit guests, 
members and friends i was glad when they said unto me come let us go into the house of the lord there are a lot of places we could be at 12 26 p.m pacific standard time but we're in the house of the lord nobody's mad about it but the devil and the good news is he doesn't have any power unless you give it to him look at your neighbor and say i'm in the house come on i'm in the house We certainly are very humbled by the invitation from your bishop. He could have picked anyone on this Sunday to preach his first pastoral anniversary for the first service, and I'm deeply honored. You have a great gift in this man. I was listening to the lady who gave the eloquent tribute to the bishop and his wife. She said they crossed many states to get here. They came a long way from Louisiana to hear, to be here. Okay. His wife. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Just let's pause for a moment. Organ, play some something soft, and we'll resume the service. Let's get her their medical attention. Amen. In fact, everybody in the sanctuary, point your finger this way. We speak healing. Come on, point at point at his wife right now. We speak healing. We speak healing, God. We speak healing. We speak healing. We speak healing. Amen. Amen. Just let's be patient. Everyone whose hand is pointed, just say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God can smile and we can be healed. Amen. calling in to the distress. Amen. God, we thank you now for your presence and your power. Move by your spirit, touch, comfort, strengthen is our prayer. Now give this preacher strength to deliver your word. May our ears and hearts be open to receive from you. Speak now in your name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, thank you. I, I want to thank the bishop for inviting me, and I certainly want to thank Reverend Campbell, who last uh, this week I was actually in Jacksonville and St. Augustine. He reached out to make sure everything was in order for me to be here. 
flew in from Atlanta yesterday, but I could not go to my hotel. I had to spend my money at Pier 39. And I, I had to actually buy bags to, put, to take back home the stuff that I bought. So I texted Bishop, he said, are you okay at the hotel? I said, I haven't even seen the hotel yet. So I wanna thank Reverend Campbell for making the accommodations and taking care of me. I want this congregation to stand on your feet and recognize Lady Brandon, amen. It's her appreciation as well. It's not just the bishop's first appreciation, it is Lady Brandon's as well, amen. We certainly honor her and all that she does. You may be seated, you may be seated. I'm very, before I get to the word of God, I am extremely blessed. My high school classmate uh, lives in Sacramento, California. Uh, he retired from the Air Force and then he worked as an investigator in the DA's office in Sacramento, California. So he stayed on the West Coast. Now, it behooves me, as bad as he was growing up, that he could, could, he could not only serve in the military, but work for the DA's office. If anybody doesn't believe in God, he's living proof that God can, God will, and God does. <laughs> but not only did Andre come this morning, but he brought one of his co-workers. I would like for both of them to stand, and let's stand on our feet and recognize them. They drove in this morning from Sacramento. Uh, to be with me today. He even wore our high school colors, blue and gold. I really appreciate that so much. As you age, you value friendship more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And as you age, not only do you value friendship more, but you really know who's a true friend versus a fake friend. And I really value our friendship. He does not get to come south often. So today, I have a big surprise for him. His favorite fish in the world is crappy. So I have brought him crappy. I've brought him alligator sausage. I've brought him bison burgers. I have brought him a whole unfilleted, whole red snapper. Uh, so I want him to know I had this frozen. And when I got here yesterday from San Francisco, the Marriott put it in the freezer for me. So I want you to come up and get this. Uh, come on up, come on up now. We're gonna take a picture of this cause I have never brought anybody frozen food from the other side of the United States. Come on around, Crip, you can get it. Pictures tell stories. Now, uh, whoever's in the food ministry, would you get that bag from him because he'll try to barbecue in the parking lot and put that in a freezer for him so it will stay cold because he's going to go back to Sacramento. So can someone from the food ministry get that for him? I, my preaching professor who's now dead, the Lord let him live to be 100 years old, Dr. Henry Mitchell from Fresno, California. He gave me his Bible that he preached from for 60 years. The printed, I don't wear glasses or reading glasses, but the print in this Bible is so small that I brought reading glasses to read from it. Uh, I would like for you to stand to honor God's word. Second Kings, the sixth chapter. Second Kings, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse number eight. And I will read the King James Version. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such and such place, for there the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved him there, not only nor twice. There, therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which one of us is for the king of Israel? Look at your neighbor and say, Who's a snitch? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel for the words that you speak in your chamber, your bed chamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. 
And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he their horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night. Somebody shout, sneak attack. And compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? In Greek, the Hebrew there means what shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. Look at your neighbor and say, Don't be scared. For they that are be with us are more than they that be with them. Verse 17, Elisha prayed. He's praying to God and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain there was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Again, verse 17, and he said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Look at your neighbor. and Repeat this subject after me this morning. Lord. Please open my eyes so that I may see my invisible advantage. You may be seated. There are moments in our lives when it would seem that we are the underdog. There are moments in our lives, Andre, that it seems that the wind is in our face and not at our backs. There are moments in my life, there are moments in your life where when things can go wrong, they do go wrong. There are scenes, situations, and scenarios where we find ourselves struggling to try to make sense out of life. Sometimes our dreams are shattered. Sometimes our dreams are drowned. Our hopes are hung and our promises are plummeted. Sometimes we can be in fire on church and catch hello after the benediction. Sometimes life has us in a happy place, takes us to a sad place, back to a glad place, back to an aggravating place. I, I, sometimes in my story and in your story, the facts do not match our faith. Oh, somebody missed your shout right there. I, I don't care how saved you are, how anointed you are. There are moments in my story and your story that the facts and the faith do not add up. There are moments in our lives, your story and my story, there are scenes and situations and scenarios where things simply do not make sense. There are moments when we are the underdog. There are moments, Evergreen, uh, there are moments, Lady Brandon, when, when the odds are against us. Saved or not, there are days when the odds are against us. Andre, we call him Crip in high school. Uh, Andre, uh, none of us at the University of Georgia two years ago wanted Stetson Bennett to be the quarterback. The odds were against him. We want a young man from California by the name of J.T. Daniels to be the quarterback. J.T. ends up getting hurt. Stetson gets in. And all Stetson did was won the national championship. But we were not satisfied because we still didn't think he was good enough. We wanted him to leave Georgia and go on to the NFL. Stetson stayed another year and won another championship. So, 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 so what am I saying? We've got to find a way to flip the script and make the odds work for us. Look at your name and say, flip the script. Now that I've gotten your attention, let's unravel this text. Let us unpack this text. We come to a, a moment when the odds are against Israel. God's people are sometimes in the minority. Bishop, this is your house. Please come back to the pulpit. Uh, th th there are moments when God's people are in the minority. We come to this second chapter of, uh, we come to this, this eight, this sixth chapter of Second Kings. And we find a very old story to show us how to beat the odds. Now, it opens up by talking about, Bishop, I need you closer. Please come down here where you were sitting. Now, now, uh, so, so, so. So what happens, so, so what happens, we find out here in 2 Kings, the sixth chapter, it opens by saying the king of Aram, Aram is Syria, was at war with Israel. Now Israel had done nothing to Syria but been a friend, but now they are at war. Now let me show you how quickly people can trip 
trip out on you. Just in chapter 5, uh, Israel had blessed, uh, blessed King Ben-Hadad of Syria by allowing the prophet E-L-I-S-H-A, Elisha, successor to Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H, he allowed him to heal him and there was peace in the land. He gave a gift to the king of Israel because he healed him. But as my grandmother would say in the country, the devil got in him. Uh, the, the devil got in the king and he forgot the good deed and now he wants to cause trouble. Now, now let me come down your street for a moment here in Oakland. Have you ever blessed somebody and then they turned on you? Have you ever loaned somebody some money and then they got mad at you when you asked for it back? Have you ever gotten someone out of the ditch and later you found out they in the words of the OJs they were backstabbers. Now, so, so people are soon and quick to forget what you have done for me. We live in a Janet Jackson world where folk want to know what have you done for me lately. So what happens a king forgets the goodness and now he goes up for war, a war against the Israel. Like, let me tell you, you don't have to be doing nothing for two people for them to begin hating on you. You don't have to be doing anything for a clown to clown on you. You don't have to be doing anything for haters to drink hater. Eh? Some people just like to be messy. So what, what he says, I'm going to set up my camp in such and such place. But look at this. The man of God sent word. The man of God. The man of God in this story is Elisha. E-L-I-S-H-A. Successor to Elijah. E-L-I-J-A-H. Elisha. E-L-I-S-H-H. -H, could have asked Elijah. E-L-I-J-A-H. For anything that he wanted on his way to heaven. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for fame and fortune. He says, I want a double portion of the anointing that's on you. Elijah said, you know you what you're asking for. Only God can do that. But if you see me when I'm caught up, then it is yours. So the mantle falls on Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, successor to Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H, and he has a double portion of the anointing. Evergreen is blessed because Bishop was in Shreveport, but when that mantle fell, it brought brought him back home where he's from because he had a double portion. So Israel is in trouble and guess who speaks up for Israel? The man of God. When the church is in trouble, the man of God must speak. When the nation is hurting, the man of God must speak. When we can't figure out Israel and Hamas, the man of God must speak. When we cannot understand the polarization and the toxicity of American politics, we need the prophet to speak a word. So the king of Israel, Reverend Tory, does not know that an attack is underway. He does not know. But verse number nine says the man of God sent word to the king, beware of going to such and such place because the Armenians are going down there. So the king of Israel in verse 10 checked on the place indicated by the man of God. And time and time again, Elisha warned the king where to go. We need a prophet who, who understands the man, the mantle, and the mission to warn the people of God of the danger. I'm so glad that God gives us intuition. I'm so glad that God gives us discernment. Yes, forgive people when they do you wrong, but forgiveness doesn't mean I need to have you at my house for dinner. It's, it's a I, I, I'm an Aquarius, so by, by my astrological sign, I have no problem for cutting folk off when they act cray cray. I will give you two shirts off my back, but d deceive me and watch. I'm gonna ask for my shirt back. So, what happens here? What happens here? The time and look, look, see, you cannot see everything. I cannot see everything, but the man of God can see because he is connected to God. The bishop is connected to God. Yes, he's a man. Yes, Yes, I'm a man, but we have a different connection because we work for the man. Look at your name and say the man. It says time and a time again. So God warns us. God gives us discernment. Everybody doesn't need to eat at your house. You don't need to go scuba. I'm a scuba diver. I don't dive with everybody. You don't need to golf with everybody, Andre. You need to have discernment because some of your greatest pain will come from those closest to you. Look at somebody and say, ouch. 
So, so though, though the king of Syria, Ben-Hadad, wanted to take out uh, the king of Israel, it couldn't happen because God kept blocking it. God used the man of God, E-L-I-S-H-A, Elisha, successor to Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H, to run interference. Where would you be today if God didn't have somebody in your life who ran interference? They were trying to get you fired at work, but you kept the job because God ran interference. Uh, now, where, where's my organist? Organist, when I hit these notes, I need a don't, don't. Uh, uh, see, when, when I hit a note like that, let, let's practice it. They tried to run you out of the job, but God... God ran interference. Boom. There we go. That's a, so what ends up happening? They tried to take your good name and ruin it, but God ran interference. They, they left you to die in a ditch on the Jericho Road, but God ran interference. I just feel like I got two or three folk in here that can testify that God runs interference. They tried to block it, but God woo, ran interference so 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 because god was running interference look what happens in the next verse verse number 11 then this enraged the king of aram ben haddad got ticked off to the highest level of tictivity i'm gonna add a new word to your lexicon say tictivity that way you don't say foul words so so say tictivity so, so, so the king of Aram, which has been had at, he, he is ticked off to the highest level of tictivity. He says in verse 11, this enraged the king. He summons his officers and demanded, tell me, which one of you is telling my business? Right. Now, I grew up in the country. Right. Andre, he was saying, look, I know it's a dead cat on the line somewhere. <laughs> he was saying, I know something in the milk ain't clean. He said, he said, I know one of you who are in here, you're telling my business. In, in, in the gangster world, they say, you got a snitch. Somebody is snitching me out. You ever come to church and Bishop is preaching? And he all up in your business and he didn't even know your business. And you at the end of the said, Bishop, you were preaching to me. Who told you my business? You see, the, the, the man of God has a direct link to God in heaven and God gives him the wisdom to speak to his people. So the king is, the king is ticked off to the highest level of tictivity. He said, tell me, the, the, the Hebrew there in the NIV translation has an exclamation point, which one of you is on the side of the king? You know, he said, I know one of y'all is a sellout. I know one of y'all, every time I plan to attack the king of Israel, my plans go awry. And the man speaks up in verse 2. He said, I'm from the country. He Nam one of us. <laughs> if you know what nam one mean, raise your hand. Hey, hey, man, don't let the doctor in my title fool you. I can speak the doctoral language and the country language. He, he says in verse 12, none of us, my king, the Lord, said one of his officers, we are loyal. And you need loyal people in your life. You can't see everything. You need loyal people in your life. You can't be everywhere. You need loyal people in your life. There are some burdens you cannot bear alone. God sends loyal people in your life. He said, King, we loyal, but we know who it is. Look at what he says, verse 2. But Elisha. Y'all know who Elisha is. E L I S H H. Successor to Elijah. E L I J A H. He said, but Elisha, the prophet who's in Israel, he tell the king the very word. You're speaking in your bedroom. When I was an undergrad in the 80s, this lady, I can't think of the singer, she had a song, Somebody Sleeping in My Bedroom. Or so, that woo mean you know the song, amen. <laughs> Thank you for confirmation. I need some of y'all looking at me like, you, you ain't been saved all of your life. If Luther Vandross coming here with creep, creep, you'll jump out that seat. So, 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 so. He said, none of us have snitched. He said, but it is Elisha, the prophet. Oh, don't, don't, don't underestimate who Bishop really is. He's a prophet from God. The prophet can see what you cannot see. The prophet can feel what you cannot feel. He said, Elisha, the prophet in Israel, he's telling the king the very words you speak in your bedroom. 
this enrage has been had that, Reverend Campbell. It says in that next verse, he says, go and find out where he is so I can send my men and capture him. Now, now theologians really debate this passage. They, they said, does he want to really capture him so he can now get intelligence on Israel or does he want to capture him and silence him? I don't, I just look at somebody and say bonus time. Bonus time means that wasn't in my script. It was an IR, an instant revelation by the Holy Spirit. There are some folk who want to silence you because your anointing is so strong. There are some folk who want to shackle you because God's favor is in your life. There are some folk who want to turn your light off because God is moving in your light. You need to understand that you have been chosen to be great. You've been chosen to be brilliant. Never apologize for what God is doing in your life he says he says go find out so that that i can send some men and capture him and the, the bible says and the report the report says that he is in dothan not dothan alabama but he was in dothan which was 12 miles from shechem we remember dothan because this is where joseph's brothers sailed him to the ishmaelites who later take him into captivity in egypt as a slave he said he is in dothan isn't it amazing that they can identify they can know where he is it's just elisha e-l-i-s-h-a successor to elijah e l i j just elijah and one servant and look what they do he is in dothan they sent horses and chariots and a strong force there they went by night and surrounded the city the king sends andre served in the, in the air force bishop you and andre both served the air force the difference is you got an honorable discharge he got a dishonorable discharge <laughs> he did not he did not so 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 listen 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 Andre, what they do to get two little men, they send out the Navy SEALs. To get two little men, they send out the, the Green Beret. To get two little men, they send out a brigade, br brigade to get the Roman legions. Before Rome is not yet birth. So Romans, the legions were 6,000 soldiers. They sent almost the equivalent of a Roman detachment of legionary soldiers to take out two men. When the enemy hates you, he will use full force to try to break you. I came to tell somebody tonight to this morning, you are unbreakable. I don't care how many haters you got, you are unbreakable. I don't care if they bring the Navy SEALs, the Green Beret, the Special Ops, the Red Dogs, and the SWAT team I am uh, unbreakable I need somebody to look at your neighbor and say I'm unbreakable oh you caught you caught up with me now baby so so what happens is they send out the full forces to take them out when you are walking in the anointing look for them to try to take you out when you are minding your own business look for them to try to take you out when you are climbing jacob's ladder and every round goes higher look for them to take you out when your anointing is on display not because you are boasting but because god has elevated you look for them to send the red dogs look for them to send the SWAT look for them to send the Navy SEALs look for them to send the Green Beret look at your neighbor and say I'm unbreakable but look at what they do look at what they do Crip the Bible says they went out and surrounded the city by night this was a sneak attack look at your neighbor and say sneak attack Elisha E-L-I-S-H-H successor to Elijah E-L-I-J-A-H he's reclining in his tent he's snoring he's fast asleep his servant is asleep so the king has sent a sneak attack you need to keep your antenna up because the devil likes to sneak up on you you need to keep your antennas up because the haters specialize in sneak attacks you better sleep with one eye closed and one eye open in the middle of a storm the bible says they come by night and they surround the city so now bishop you can't get in dothan and you can't get out of dothan they got them locked down. Elisha is asleep. He doesn't know he's on lockdown. Uh, the servant Elijah, who was Jehiah's, he's been replaced. The
unnamed servant, they do not know that they are on lockdown. Look at your neighbor and say, bonus time. You can be locked up, but not locked out. <laughs> Somebody missed your shout. So let me, let me say that again. You can be locked up, but not locked out. Come here, Joseph. Joseph was in prison in that 37th chapter of Genesis. He's locked up, but he's not locked out because he taps into the anointing and tells the baker and the other attendant to Pharaoh, one of you will be hung and one of you will be freed. You need to understand you can't shackle a child of God. You can't put God's preacher and prophet on chain gang. You can't put God's people in the solitary confinement. Locked up but not locked out. Somebody shout, I'm free as a bird. They are peacefully. They are peacefully asleep. They do not know that they are uh, under surveillance. They do not know that the armies have positioned themselves in the mountains. They do not know that you can't get in Dothan and get out of Dothan. So it is about breakfast time. Can I use my sanctified imagination? The prophet, who, who Elisha, his servant, who is his armor bearer, if you will, Reverend Tory, he gets up to make a good country breakfast. He gets up to make and I don't eat this stuff anymore. That's why I can scuba dive and look this size at 57. Uh, he, he makes some strickling bacon. He makes some salmon croquet. Now I still eat that. He makes some grits. I still eat that. He makes some eggs but I eat cage free eggs. He makes a good pancakes. He make. Do y'all know what molasses is with some country biscuits? He has all of that set up. He's on his way to eat breakfast but the Bible says in verse number 15 when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning an army with horses and chariots surrounded the city he says oh no my lord what shall we do he says he sees hundreds of hundreds and thousands of horses he says oh no my lord what shall we do he pushes the panic button because they are outnumbered have you ever felt like in your life there are moments when you are outnumbered and you say lord what am I going to do? In the country, we used to sing a song called Hush and Listen. Somebody's calling my name. Then that next verse, it says, sounds like Jesus is calling my name. You need to understand that when you are outnumbered, Jesus is working behind the scenes. You need to understand that when the odds are against you, Jesus is not asleep. How do I know he is not asleep? Because the psalmist says he never sleeps, nor slumbers. Do you know why you woke up this morning? It wasn't the alarm clock. It was because Jesus never sleeps nor slumbers. But now the, the prophet's servant, he asked the right questions. He says, what shall we do? I Evergreen, what do you do when you go to the doctor and the report is unfavorable? Evergreen, what do you do when your back is up against the wall and the wall is about to collapse? Evergreen, what do you do when you're swimming up the creek? There's a hole in the boat, the paddle broke, you ain't got no life jacket, and you don't know how to swim. What shall we do? Look at your neighbor and say, what shall we do? But then the prophet kicks in. He says, do not be afraid. I know we're outnumbered, but do not be afraid. I know the odds are against us, but do not be afraid. I know it's more of them than you can see see but do not be afraid look at what he says he said those who are with us are more than those that are with them the prophet the, the servant says well, you don't know how to add up and count it's just me and you that's two it's a thousand of them and you telling me there is more for us than against us and the bible says Elisha E-L-I-S-H-A successor to E -L J-A-H he said open Lord open his eyes Lord open his eyes Jehovah Jireh open his eyes Elohim open his eyes Jehovah Sikhanu open his eyes that he may see and the Bible says that the Lord open his eyes 
and when the servant looked up he saw chariots of fire that were ten times larger than Ben Haddad's army he opened his eyes he could now see the invisible Adam Clayton Powell Jr. my favorite alpha and favorite preacher from that era of the Abyssinian Baptist Church in Harlem he said we must see the invisible touch the intangible and hear the inaudible when God opens your eyes you can make it when God opens your eyes you got the invisible advantage when God opens your eyes you can't lose ah, yeah. look at your neighbor and say yeah open your eyes and see your advantage open your eyes and see your favor open your eyes and see his grace goodbye bishop goodbye lady brandon good afternoon reverend tory good afternoon andre i gotta get back to what they call the rappers call the dirty dirty south but before i leave you look up look around but never look down the psalmist said i will lift my eyes to the hill to the hill to the hills from which cometh my help oh 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 of my help comes from the lord can you say yeah can you say yeah open my eyes open my eyes open my eyes Everybody's standing on your feet. Everybody's standing on your feet. Give me some strings. Give me some strings. Listen, listen, listen to me. They were outnumbered. There were more of them than just Elisha and his servant. But when he opened his eyes, he saw the invisible advantage. And the invisible advantage was it's more for us than against us somebody who's been struggling today you need to open your eyes and see your invisible advantage because god is working for you let me tell you how deep this invisible advantage is some of you some of you who receive this by faith god is getting ready to open doors that you haven't even knocked on yet When you understand the invisible advantage, you will find out that God flips the script. What was working against you now works for you. Woo! Somebody say, God flipped the script. In the rest of that story, the Bible says, God asked Elijah, God, Elijah asked God to blind them. And God struck that army with blind means confusion. He led them where they didn't want to go and yet saved their lives. So as I leave you, take your hand off the panic button and begin to see your invisible advantage. Take your hand off the stress button and begin to see your invisible advantage. I want you to join hands with the person beside you. I'm going to pray for you. Bow your heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, help us to see our invisible advantage. We, it may appear to the natural eye that we are outnumbered. <laughs> but open our eyes to see the invisible advantage where we have more for us <laughs> than against us. Lord, open our eyes so that we may see joy, that we may see peace, that we may see prosperity, that we may see healing, that we may receive golden years of retirement. Open our eyes so we can see the invisible advantage. You promise to never leave us nor forsake us. Do not let us look down but let us lift our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help. And all of our help 
comes from the Lord. Amen. Put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, we can do better than that. I, I want you to look at your neighbor and repeat after me. I have the invisible advantage. I, I want these three young men right here. I just feel your greatness in your future. I want you to look at me and scream, Dr. Walker, I have the invisible advantage. Now, come on, say it like a Tupac rapper. Say it like E-40 and Short Dog. Dr. Walker, I have the invisible advantage. And if you stick with the bishop, he's going to help you open your eyes to see that invisible advantage. Amen. Were you blessed by God's word today? Were you blessed by God's word? Please remain standing. Please remain standing. I want to lift an offering. If you were blessed by the word, we need to bless the man of God. I did not come all the way from, California, from Atlanta empty-handed. It costs more to live in Oakland than it does in Shreveport. I can move to Shreveport tomorrow and live like a tree in there. I, I, I move to Oakland tomorrow, I'm going to have to work five jobs just to pay the rent. So, 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 no, I'm moving with you and your wife first. So, so you need to understand that the servant is worthy of his hire. We want to bless him financially. Now, I'm giving twice. I already gave $100 in your offering. And I already paid my tithes at my church today while I was sitting here. But this is all about the bishop. And I want to, if you want to bless him, let me see your hand. Don't put your hand up unless you mean, let me see your amen, amen, amen. Now, I'm going to start this offering off for him myself. Do you, are you, do you have a basket? How do you take this offering? How do you take it? How do you take it? Okay, on the altar. Okay, I'm going to put $1,000 on the altar for the bishop. $1,000. That, that's from me to him. That is from me personally to the bishop. Now, Lady Wanda, because you've put up with him all this time, 90% of that thousand goes to you. You said that thumbs up. She got that. Well, she threw that thumb up so fast, it's going to be in her cash. Now, I don't want to embarrass anyone. If you can match my thousand, I want you to bring it to the altar. If you can match it, don't come yet, because I'm going to give you some options to get there. If you don't have a thousand, but you can partner with somebody else, y'all put your 500 together, and that'll still equal a thousand. Amen? 500 plus 500 equals what? So I don't care how you get there. So, so hold, I'm going to let you come to the altar shortly. Maybe you say, you know what, Pastor? I don't have a thousand. I know the economy is tough, it's up and down, but heaven does not have a recession. I can tell by how the way some of y'all dress, money is not no issue. Okay, maybe you can give 500. I want you to bring that to the altar today. Amen? So what, Pastor? I can give the bishop hundred dollars you bring that to the altar amen and then maybe you won't fall in a thousand or five the 250 or the hundred or the 50 bring your best because whether i give a thousand or i give 25 if that was my best god's gonna bless me based on giving my best remember that lady the widow's might she put that one might in jesus said she gave more than the rest of the big dogs because it came from her heart we don't give to be seen, but we need to be seen giving. Somebody missed that shout. <laughs> we don't give to be seen, but we ought to be seen giving. So I want to bless that man. So everybody who has an offering in any of those categories, come on down now and lay it on the altar. Come on, lay it on the altar. As you're coming, I'm praying, Father God, in the name of Jesus, bless every giver. Let them receive it in a hundred different ways. Not just monetary, but don't let the transmission go out. Don't let the washing machine go out. Don't let the dog get sick. Don't let them have a sickness that requires them to pay out-of-pocket expense. Lord, bless them. Give it back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask that you will come now with your offering. Come on with your thank you. Thank you so much. And if you're giving online, if you, I forgot about the online givers. You give. Temple of Faith, my church, thank you for tuning in watching from Atlanta. I know it's a three-hour time difference, but I want you to give too. I want you to give too. All the online givers, you can go to the Giveify app which is what I used earlier, Evergreen Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You can give on, your, you can give on the Giveify app or you can give right here in person. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Reverend Tori.
At this time, the altar is open. Those of you who've received the word today and maybe desire prayer or you desire membership or you've never accepted Jesus in your heart, this is an opportunity for you to come right now. Maybe you today have been without a church home for a long time. And you need to be restored. It might not be evergreen, but you can come today to make that commitment that you do want to be restored so that God will open our eyes that everything that we see in our city, in our state, in this country, that we'll be able to see them through God's perspective. Is there one that will come for prayer, for baptism, or either for church membership today? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Again, this afternoon at 3.30 p.m., we will worship and celebrate again we're going to ask that our intercessors and music team be in place at 3 p.m. to prepare the atmosphere. This is the house of worship. We're going to pray before we go upstairs and ask God's blessings on the food, and then you'll be given further up instructions when you get up there. Well, let's praise the Lord. Let's thank God for the word. God's word is life. And we thank God for our viewers and our guests that's here today. Ev, I want you to know, guests, that Evergreen is a great family. Evergreen, make some noise, Evergreen. We are a great family, a great church. And uh, those of you that are considering, we're praying for you. I want to pastor you. I really do. I want to shepherd you and, and help you to collide into your destiny. So we thank God for all of our guests. Let's bless the Lord for all of our guests one more time. Repeat after me. God is love. Amen. And understanding that God is love, know that all is well. Looking forward to seeing you upstairs. Let's fellowship together. And then, of course, we begin at 3.30 sharp. Of course, we start on time all of the time. And what a blessing. So I'm looking forward to it. And again, prayer begins at 3. All of our programs and uh, functions going forward, we're going to have intercessory prayer 30 minutes prior. Amen. To saturate the house as we worship our God, which is so important. You know your pastor is the man of faith, man of prayer, and the man of evangelism. And that is so, so important as we advance God's agenda. I love all of you. I really do. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love. Let us all stand all over this place. I certainly appreciate you. Want to see you upstairs. And if you can't stay, come upstairs for a moment so I can hug your neck. I really appreciate you. Let's receive Reverend Campbell. I wasn't supposed to say much today, but I wanted to say that and appreciate all of you in Jesus' name. And of course, our guests, you can come on now and follow Bishop upstairs. We've got special seating for you when you get upstairs. Amen. God, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you that your word will saturate our hearts and that we'll be able to see you. Now we ask that you bless the food, the hands that prepared it, and bless our fellowship in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all.